When discussing ultrasound guided peripheral nerve block technique, it is useful to describe basic nomenclature for needle and probe manipulation. Much of this is derived from the American Institute of Ultrasound in Medicine standards. We will describe the two basic scan planes, the five probe manipulation maneuvers, and the two needle approaches. In the following figures, we are looking at a schematic of an ultrasound transducer applied to a tissue equivalent phantom with three different embedded objects. A depiction of the ultrasound screen is inset. We generally image long cylindrical structures with an ultrasound beam that is essentially planar. Short axis imaging cuts the cylinder transversely, revealing a circle. Long axis imaging cuts the cylinder longitudinally to create two parallel lines. Long axis imaging is of limited use in ultrasound guided peripheral nerve blocks. An ultrasound transducer can be rotated or translated along any of its three axes. Hence, we need to use the AIUM standards so that we can communicate clearly with one another. Here we see an ultrasound probe moving and pivoting along each of its X, Y, and Z axes. Each of these movements has a name that we will define in the next section. Sliding is a maneuver that translates the transducer along the course of its structure, or perpendicular to it, to scan adjacent structures. Compression is a useful maneuver that has numerous effects. First, it moves the active face toward deeper structures, to make them appear more superficial. It also helps differentiate between different structures by their relative compressibility. Veins are easy to compress, arteries are somewhat compressible and pulsatile, and nerves are fairly incompressible. Rocking allows us to extend the plane of imaging when we are working in a narrow acoustic window. Rotation is used to switch between short axis and long axis imaging. Tilting allows us to scan along the course of a structure through a narrow acoustic window. In nerve imaging, it is critical to optimize transducer tilt to properly visualize nerve fascicles. Nerves are seen best when the scan plane is orthogonal to the course of the nerve. Given that we are most interested in nerves imaged on short axis, we will now look at how the needle will be seen as it approaches nerves. With the out-of-plane needle approach, the needle starts in front of the plane of imaging and advances until it crosses the plane of imaging as an echogenic dot. With the in-plane needle approach, the needle is visualized on its long axis as it advances within the scan plane. Now let's move on to show some of the common challenges with visualizing the block needle sonographically. Block needles are specular reflectors, meaning they reflect sound back to the receiver over a narrow angle. As the angle between the transducer and needle increases, less sound is reflected back to the receiver, and the signal becomes weaker. We can also see that this is true for sound reflected off the sides of the needle shaft. With the short axis out of plane approach, the needle will be seen best when the tip is within the plane of imaging. The shaft gives a signal that may be no stronger than surrounding structures. 
Generally, tissue displacement is transmitted far enough along tissue planes for the operator to get a sense for the trajectory of the needle. This is a dynamic process and relies on the operator's ability to detect tissue displacement created by needle movement. Staccato movements should be avoided. Needle position can also be inferred by observing the distribution of small test injections and making needle adjustments. Often, slight tilting of the probe can be used to locate and follow the advancing needle tip. In-plane needle manipulation offers its own set of challenges. Here is a sonogram of a block needle with the transducer sliding in and out of alignment with the needle. Subtle movements of the needle or transducer can produce marked changes in visibility. This pair of sonograms shows the same needle at different angles in a water tank. The needle is much better resolved when it is inserted at a shallow angle relative to the transducer. The next set of problems occurs when the needle trajectory strays from the plane of imaging. If the needle crosses the plane of imaging but does not completely lie within it, only a portion of the needle will be seen. This can give a false impression of needle depth that can lead to complications. Alignment issues can often be addressed by leaving the needle stationary and manipulating the transducer until the tip of the needle is imaged. The needle bevel has a characteristic stair-step appearance that should be sought out. This concludes this video tutorial on ultrasound probe and needle manipulation.